Just the other week, Monster Hunter Wild was released on beta test, and if you were lucky enough to get your hands on this thing, it was a little bit of a mixed bag between really fun to play and completely unplayable. So let's dive into what we can expect from the full release and what we actually got from that beta. The first thing that everyone is talking about with this beta is that there were some pretty massive performance issues across both PC, PlayStation, Xbox, basically every single console, every single PC felt some sort of growing pains with the beta. Whether that was just with fully polygonal characters, blacked out screens, completely unloading screens. When it comes to the performance issues, people saw issues across every single platform. I played on PC as well as console, and I can tell you that both of mine had a very hard time running the game. If you put it on performance mode, you got a little bit of a better experience, but it was pretty rough across Xbox Series X, as well as PS5, and my PC, there were a bunch of issues. But if you could get past the performance issues, what was underneath was the start of a pretty interesting game. I've played tons of Monster Hunter games, and Wild seems like it's trying to start something a little bit new. Let's dive into one of those mechanics. First and foremost, let's talk about the focus mechanic. Focus mechanic allows you to kind of focus in on a monster and actively see specific parts that you want to be targeting. It's nice in theory, but the reality is, is that it's still pretty clunky in the way it feels. Just zooming in on a monster to find a wounded spot, it's functional, but a lot of times when I was playing, that wounded spot wasn't anywhere near any of the parts of the monster that I was focusing. I'm a hammer main, so I am always going for the head, and most of the wounds were showing up in the back half of the monster. That being said, with your trial monster, it's a pretty small creature, so I'm not surprised that there wasn't exactly perfect accuracy. But overall, I would say that the focus mechanic seems a little bit half-baked still. It doesn't give you any specific feeling of actually focusing in on a specific part. It just feels like it's a new feature that they're trying to test out and experiment with, and it's not quite there yet. I'm really excited to see how the focus mechanic is actually implemented into the game, because as of right now, it still needs a little bit of tweaking in my opinion. Next, let's talk about the weapon sets. You get every single weapon set that you got in most of the Monster Hunters of the modern era, and the beta gave us a pretty good insight into exactly how they're going to work. The weapon sets themselves were pretty cool looking and very fun to use. It felt very close to worlds with a little bit of tweaking here and there, mainly a couple of different button combinations, but those are just new movesets that we're going to have to learn. So fear not all you Lance users, you can continue to use your favorite weapon of all time. Next, let's talk a little bit about weapon mechanics. Besides the focus mechanic, there is one mechanic that feels the most different to me from Rise and Worlds before that. It's the fact that most of your combos are now going to have an additional output of being two buttons at the same time, basically. For PlayStation controllers, it was your circle and your triangle. And for Xbox Series X, it's those same top two buttons. Now, I love the idea of adding new move sets to the weapons. It gives us something new to kind of chain off of instead of your big bang combo with your hammer or your traditional great sword move set. It just feels a little bit too hammer fisted to me still. Using two buttons consistently and having those button inputs put in at the exact same time seems like it's going to be a little bit finicky overall. I think it's a great idea to mix things up. I'm just not so sure I'm going to love the new two button mechanic. I can already foresee myself missing that combo a million times because I accidentally just hit one instead of two buttons. Character creator looked beautiful. Across the consoles and the PC, it looked really, really pretty. That being said, to get it to a place where the game was playable, you did have to knock some of those graphics pretty low. So when you're in the character builder, you're kind of not getting the best experience. I'm sure, once again, that this graphical issue is going to be completely swapped out and taken care of at full release. It didn't really feel like we could see everything the game was capable of because we were hamstringed by that issue so much. That being said, I did experiment with the character creator and it was really cool to see the level of customization that you actually can get from the character creator. I think overall it's going to give us the most flexibility in building a new character and I'm excited to build mine. The Palicos seem like they got a little bit less variability, but I'm not too upset about it because honestly I like the ones that they had before. Given that I'm a plain Jane guy and I've built the same Palico for the last six Monster Hunter games, I don't mind that mine's still there. Let's talk a little bit about the map that we saw and what we can look forward to. Overall, the map itself felt fun and pretty and full of life, but it just felt a little bit small and contained. And I know that the developers did this intentionally, giving themselves less work overall on the beta, even though I know that there's massive maps already built and fully designed. The map itself felt like it was giving us a little bit of a taste of that vision, but not quite the full slice. 
I liked the map. I thought it gave us a lot of flexibility. As a hammer player, I love the fact that we still have our slidey areas because I love sliding with the hammer. Overall, I thought it was a great little section of map that they gave us a good viewpoint into what they're aiming for for the full game. Let's talk about the monster you actually get to hunt in the beta test, which is the Chatacabra. Pretty cool little creature, small but tanky. It felt a lot like a mix between the Rajang from like Monster Hunter's past and a Radaban with that big chin. But the Monster Hunter team does a great job of creating new monsters and bringing old monsters back that everyone loves to fight against. And there was also a ton of new wildlife that we got to see. I'm really excited to see the new monster designs. I try my best to not get spoiled by new designs myself because I love playing the game through and through on my first try. But I thought that the Chatacabra was a really nice place to start. Right away when you launch into the beta, after you get past character creation, you find out that you get to ride some chickens. <laughs> it seems like the Palico companions that you could get in Monster Hunter World are back in and front and center this time. I think it's a nice addition to have this get around the map faster mechanic, because in so many of the other games you had to just kind of like track your way across a massive forest and it would take forever. I think the chickens are going to give us a great way to get in and out. I kind of get the feeling like we're going to have new mounts that we can get later in the game, and I'm really excited about that. We didn't get to handle the chickens too much, but for the time that you actually get to spend on it, it felt pretty good, and it was pretty smooth overall. I think the mounts are going to be great in the new game. Finally, I wanted to talk just a little bit about art style. It seems like they're leaning into that Monster Hunter world, kind of like hyper-realistic instead of the Rise, kind of more cartoony look. I like the art style. I think it'll be fun having a hyper-realistic one. Having a hyper-realistic Monster Hunter is always enjoyable. The only issue that I might have with it is the fact that the performance issues were so bad, and oftentimes performance can be tied directly to like hair mechanics. So having that hyper-realistic art style might be one of the causes of those performance issues. Overall, I had an absolute blast playing with Monster Hunter Wilds, and I am so excited for the full release. I've been playing Monster Hunter for so long, and having all my friends back together on Monster Hunter is going to be so good. I can't wait to play with you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!